Welcome back to another episode of the We Live to Build podcast. This is going to be episode number 104. This is our second video episode. I'm really excited. Uh, last one turned out really well. If you haven't watched it yet, definitely go look at it. It's with Dr. Eduardo Roja. We talked about cybersecurity. So let's introduce our guest now. Anna Wong is a very good friend of mine. I think I've known you for nine years now. You're the <laughs> co-founder and CEO of Female Entrepreneurs Worldwide based, in, based out of Hong Kong. Asia's largest business platform for female entrepreneurs, founders, business executives who want to learn and network. FEW runs an accelerator that offers mature startups a range of services from cash investment, mentorship, media coverage, and valuable access to your exclusive investor network. You're specifically responsible for strategic development, branding, fundraising, market entry, and business growth. When you're not doing all of these incredible things, I don't know how the hell you have time for. You're also a speaker at regional conferences, universities, publications, and TEDx. Prior to starting your own ventures with FEW, uh, you worked for a PR team at Hong Kong's uh, business magnet, Lui Che. Oh, I'm sure I said that wrong. And uh, later you worked with uh, leading communications agencies, O&M and Edelman. One of the reasons that I wanted to bring you on is because networking is an extremely important part for any business owner. And I couldn't think of anyone better to talk about because every time I talk to you, you're like, I'm going to meet this billionaire tomorrow. Or, you know, this is my uncle, you know, some guy like my family is known for decades. And it's like someone that someone like me, who's not from Hong Kong would be like, it would be impossible to ever possibly reach someone like that. So what I want to go through in this episode with you is how to network, but also so how to network in a focused way, but also how to network up a level. Meaning if you're just starting a company and you know maybe you haven't made the million dollars yet, how can you get multimillionaires to give you their attention or you know people doing 100 million or billions, things like that. So uh, why don't we... Why don't you tell us a little bit about kind of um, where FEW is right now, and we'll go from there. Okay, sounds good. Uh, thank you, Son. Uh, we have been, uh, yeah, we have known each other for almost yeah ten years, a decade. And um, when I first met you, I was still running another company, and then um, I had the opportunity to um, run FEW because I had. Um, you know, I met Ines and then we have the similar belief that it's quite important to support female founders. And especially uh, in recent years, we see more and more female founders. Um, they have incredible ideas, and but at the same time, they are lacking um, um, capital, resources, or network to scale up their business. So this is why we start in that space and gathering all the leaders, investors, and industrial experts to support the female founders. So now the business has been in the market for seven and six months now, <laughs> seven years and six months. Um, we are expanding in the region. Uh, we started here in Hong Kong and then we expand to Shanghai, um, Shenzhen, Singapore, Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand, um, focusing on Southeast Asia. And before the COVID, we are supposed to be in New York and Europe, but now kind of like um, refining our strategy, hopefully things will be back to normal. Yeah. Good. Thanks for that. And I remember when you were working on three companies at the same time and FEW was like a very, very small thing. It was like something you really wanted to do. And you're like, Sean, I don't know what to do. I have all this opportunity. And I was like, what do you love the most? And you're like, I love helping women. And I was like, fine, forget the other two and just focus on FEW. And, and you, you did it. And you know, where you are now is, is huge. Um, so I'm curious now. Okay. Let's be fair. Your family, is privileged. Your, I believe your family owns factories in the mainland. Is that right? Um, yes, but yeah, I don't want to emphasize like, you know, privilege or uh, yeah. Well, the, the reason I say it is because surely starting a business is hard. Yeah. And I'm wondering, did you use your family's relationships or name to start FEW? Um, no, honestly, because, you know, up to now, my parents still are not that clear about what I'm doing on FEW. Uh, <laughs> 
they're all you know like because they were in the business which are more uh capitalistic uh what to say you know is they uh, have a view like like a, a basically like a view business manufacturing they have product production um they have supply chain um they sell the product physical product to the end consumer um they have retails so fw is pretty conceptual to them in the early beginning um but now they get to know more about what i'm doing over the years so um it's getting better like especially you know i i I come from a traditional Chinese family, so this is why they sometimes would um, think, um, you know, you know, Ch Chinese parents they always think um, it's important to spend your effort on something that is more uh, scalable, profitable in their eyes. But you know, FBW, I'm I'm quite excited today. I'm proving, you know, we already have certain milestone achievement. Um, so and, and promote to the public uh, private sectors or government bodies is really important to empower women. Uh, when we first launched FEW in Hong Kong, not to mention my parents, even like to a lot of Hong Kong local people, they would assume we are a charity or a chamber or an association. They they thought we are non-profit making and until you know we get bigger and bigger and they start to know okay we are you know offering something substantial to female founders. So this is why um, I'm quite excited now we have certain incubators after joining an incubator and they have made certain achievement and that shows our value deliver to 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 their um you know ecosystem so <laughs> i remember when i started idea exchange it got pegged as a charity as well and yeah. that was really difficult especially yeah. because we were working with the government so i remember i think it was like working with you on the party with startups i think was like one of the only opportunities that we were able to actually get money for doing the event um so yeah. that was that was a, an interesting thing i won't go into the details here because that was like that was like nine years ago i don't want to think about things that were so old uh, that, that happened so long ago so so is networking something that you specifically teach your incubies or how do you think about helping them in that regard. So I think networking is a basic skill every entrepreneur or individual should have, right? And sometimes people say, oh, you know, I'm introvert. I might not, um, it's not necessary for me to go out to meet people. But I think sometimes like if you open up yourself and you get to know people and it also make you happier personally, right? It's not necessary for business purpose. So like, for example, we have known each other for nine years. And, but I think it's, it's quite important to keep the friendship, the friendship that um, it just, you know, naturally make, it, make a person happier. So that also certain skill, networking skill, I think every individual should have. Yeah. So there's like so many different ways to go into this. It's kind of difficult. I'm trying to think about it on the fly here. Um, so if somebody wants to improve this skill, of networking yeah. what should they do to kind of get started okay <laughs> i think first of all um it could um there's so many ways right um first it's like from um you know outside um like in from you know how your first impression to people like how you could um you know get people to know more about you and i think your presentation and your even you know how you dress how you present yourself introduce yourself is really important and i would suggest you know from basically craft a message about who you are what you do and uh, introduce yourself certain keywords to introduce yourself and second is um i still believe like just 
teaching press is quite important, um, especially uh, it comes to business, right? Like some would say, hey, um, you know, Steve Jobs or Mark Zuckerberg uh, just wear casually, but they they already make their, 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 you know, they're successful. This is why they have the right to dress casually or t-shirt. But if you are not there yet, I think it's quite important for you to um, dress to impress for the occasion. And 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 I think like in terms of the the, the outfit is quite important. And for example, like what we um, do in FEW is like because we want to present our brand as a premium platform for female founders and sophisticated modern. So this is why even me and my co-founder Ines try to, um, you know, choose certain high quality outfit. And this is something uh, I think one of the tactics or strategy we are applying. And what else, like skill set, let's say, um, you know, uh, a lot of things you could do when it comes to networking, um, you could, you, I think in terms of personality, you have to be really genuine, authentic, and no one like fake people. Eh? Um, so that's why uh, being genuine is really important, I think, you know, especially to certain um, successful people we were talking, um, they try to keep their circle friends private and they don't want to expose themselves in the public or you know having someone to try to pitch them or you know get something out of them so i think you know they have been meeting a lot of people it's quite important to be authentic and genuine in front of this group of people but at the same time you have to show your competence com competence right because you know people come to you for certain reason. People associate with you for certain reason. So I think it's quite important to show others that you have potential and you are capable. Yeah, I will answer your question. So <laughs> I spent my, yeah, yeah, no, you, you, you did well, you did well, don't worry about it. Um, so mm -hmm. I spent my entire twenties in China. So mm -hmm. for me, I learned how to network in China and Chinese people are 24 seven with business cards in their hands. They're That's like ready cool. to network with anybody that they come across, mm -hmm. which it may be a little daunting for Westerners, but it was also really good practice. And uh, there's a word in Chinese, bao zhuang, it means to like package. And, yeah. and in this specific context, it, like you can like, you can package a person or you like you, you create a story that you tell. And I thought it was a really interesting concept because it's not something I had heard in the West. Now, you know, a lot of people talk about like, you need to have a story, but the Chinese do a really freaking good job of it. Like they're extremely convincing. And I thought that was a really great lesson for me. So if you want to get some good lessons, you should hang out with Chinese people, especially Chinese business people, because they will blow your mind. Um, I learned from being around Chinese people that if you just shove your business card in the person's face and then like put it in your pocket or they put it in their pocket, they kind of like don't really care. So something for me was like, if you're going to show someone a business card, only show it after you like ask them, you know, who they are, what they're doing, kind of show interest. And once you feel like there's a reason to give your card, then you give your card, but don't put your card, don't put the other person's card in your pocket, hold it in your hands, look at it for a second, make them feel like you actually care and you're thinking about it, not just like, oh, okay, just another business card, you know? So there's ways to show being genuine about that. Um, so I thought that was really interesting because, you know, and, and I love the, giving of the card with both hands. So you like have the card spread across both hands. You give it to them like that. It's kind of like this polite kind of humble, even though let's be honest, most people are not humble. And to be fair, I'm not humble either. I'm, I try, but I'm, I'm not very good at humility. So um, what are some other kind of basic things that you could share on like, let's say a first time meeting somebody that would make them want to continue a conversation with you, whether it's to not immediately walk away or to, you know, like arrange to have a second conversation. You know, how do you get that second conversation to happen? Okay, interesting. Um, 
there are many ways, right? Like, I want to reply your question about like Chinese or uh, is it Chinese or betting packaging or, or, you know, they're so good with networking. But honestly, right. I was not that impressed by the Chinese when it comes to networking. I mean, the way they network is slightly different, like um, from what I have learned in the West. I think when it comes to packaging, um, there is a term in the West, it's called a, um, personal brand, right, or personal branding. And this is something I was more inspired. But Chinese is more like they, you know, guanxi, the, the term we, we we learn the guanxi, they get together and they build their own circle. And so they can start talking about business opportunity in that circle. But they are not really related to, you know, um, focus on, you know, who they are, what they're good at, even when it comes to their company brand. So I don't see Chinese company care much about their personal brand or company branding, uh, but they really get the business opportunity from building the personal touch with that, you know, decision maker. This is what I found the difference between Chinese and uh, Western companies. So um, your question about how to get people interested in the first meeting. Um, so I would say in general, what we do is to really focus on the person we talk to. Um, we try not to talk too much about ourselves in the beginning uh, because sometimes you know you want to get to know that person so you can sell them something right <laughs> if you keep talking about yourself and you might not have enough information from them to see what they need and, and what they want and so our strategy is usually after uh, a quick introduction or short introduction of self and we want to actively listen to the uh, person what they do uh, what problems they are facing in their company or even their personal needs, right? And so this is the way for you to further introduce your company solution to the person. And second is if you want to have second meeting, um, the way we usually do is introducing someone to them first. Let's say, um, hey, uh, if you need that, I wouldn't uh, I, I would say, hey, I know somebody who is really good at that area. Um, we could make an introduction to you. And this is really useful for you to get connected to them again. Uh, try not to ask what you want in the beginning. Let's say if you want something out of them, uh, you try to offer something first. Let's say if I want to get a contact from them, if you introduce the contact to to the person first and you will start building a, you know, a network of common friends and they will start to trust you. And sometimes psychologically people want to pay back, right? <laughs> so they will further introduce their friend to you. So I think um, the first, the, 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 the easiest way is actually be generous first, introduce your contact to the person and that will help you to set up the second meeting. Yeah? That's fantastic. And that's something that I learned to do uh, many years ago when I was doing the idea exchange. I had a guy who was a who was attending my events. You may have met him or you may have heard me talk about him, uh, Mayor, an Israeli guy. And he loved what I was doing so much, he decided to mentor me for free, even though he would charge people tens of thousands of dollars for that advice. And one of the things that he helped me realize was I had built this massive following of over 10,000 people yeah. along with Lisa. And he said, every single one of these people needs something. And if you can figure out what they need, surely there's somebody else in that huge network of yours that can provide it. Yeah. And since you're the founder of something, they all want to know you. So surely it's really easy if you go, hey, I can help you with this. Hey, other person, this person needs help. <laughs> so it's really easy actually when you're the founder of something to network because everybody actually secretly wants to know you. So I think there's some power in being the founder of some sort of a platform. Um, but, but even if you're not, you know, surely you have people in your network that can help other people. And I started my real career, you know, idea exchange wasn't my career. Idea exchange launched the thing that came after it, which was being a connector. 
And by learning from him how to understand what other people wanted and then how to figure out who in my network could provide that thing, then I could determine whether or not it was something I wanted to get in the middle of and make money from or whether it was just something I wanted to toss to somebody to help them. And, you know, so as you were mentioning before, introducing the people in your network to those people um, as to be a giver is great. And uh, there's science behind people wanting to help other givers. Uh, if you want to know more about it, there's a book I read uh, called "Take uh, Give and Take by Adam Grant, PhD. Fantastic book. Really, really cool. He talks about givers, takers, and matchers. Um, and people are really intuitive. They can actually tell when you're giving because you actually want something or when you're giving because you just want to help. And I think when you have that genuine desire to help, people will pay that back. Even if you have no expectation, it'll happen. Um, so, so yeah, at, at the, that point, you also have to decide, am I doing this because I know I can make money with them? And if you can, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, yeah. as long as you're clear, there's nothing wrong with that. But, but, you know, sometimes you want to take money, sometimes you don't. And you have to make the decision about, is the relationship with that person more important than the money? Or is the money so big that like, it's worth going for the money? And even then, if you provide a good introduction and you help to close that deal, that person would still want to be friends with you, even if you made money, because you helped them to make money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so, um, so yeah, fantastic tip there. Um, what else is there that we're, we may not be thinking about? Um, cool. Um, I'll, I think sometimes, uh, you know, when it comes to business, it is fair enough to, um, you know, talk about return. Um, but you just need to put it back and right, you know, when if you expect a certain reward from what you're doing. Okay. So yeah. let's say I'm just starting out in business. I don't have a network. Let's say, uh, so I, I have recently met many Gen Z entrepreneurs. Some of them are mm. 17, 18 years old. They're still in high school. They're in college. They're just starting out. They have knowledge. They maybe are starting a business, but they don't have a network. Or even if they're 25 or 30 and they are just starting out and they don't have a network. How can they convince successful people to give them their time and energy? Well, a uh, really good question. I really like it. <laughs> um, so, you know, when you say successful people, right, they're usually busy. But at the same time, they also want to give back to the society by helping the next generation. Um, but they, when, when they're busy, they only can put time or spend time on people who have really high potential. So I think it's quite important for you or the person to really show um, the successful people they he or she have potential. And sometimes like I found um, a lot of Gen Z or young people, they don't really feel comfortable talking to the successful people. And uh, let's say if they're a guest speaker, come to the college and they might not feel uh, competent to, to talk to them after the session, right? So I would highly encourage maybe you should really take the chance to introduce yourself to that person. Um, you could invite them for uh, a copy or send them with follow-up email um, you know, telling what you have learned from them in, in, in the session. Um, so because you have to say something concrete, right? Like, like, you know, we have been receiving a lot of email all the time and you, you need something to make them feel connected. So this is why when you craft the message, it have to be really personalized. So, and, and, and second is you could, um, you know, you, you could continue to learn, but I think another way is to invite people you like to be your mentor. Uh, I think mentorship uh, could be really helpful for you to expand your network because you know uh, your mentor might take you to their network. This is why in FBW we have the mentorship program. Um, so we keep uh, inviting leaders to become a mentor of our members. So that not just FBW will introduce our member to our own network, but at the same time, the mentors would, you know, be a source of network to those members. So I think that is quite important. 
and um, that is one of the <laughs> one of the uh, my ways to 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 expand my network because you know when I was young, um, I do have you know someone senior to be my mentor in college, and afterward I. You know, when I start working for others, I always keep a really good relationship with my manager and boss. <laughs> Even today, I'm still in really good relationship with my professor and bosses. You know, my 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 of my employer of the past company because I think it's quite important to um, um, be in good relationship with people in the industry. And at the end of the day, uh, it's all about credibility, right? When it comes to business, and so this is why um, I think, especially for young people right now, and you're still young, so you could start reaching out to more leaders to learn from them. But you know, at our age, because you have already certain experience, and so it's even difficult for us to get people to mentor you because you know people thought like. People will think, okay, you already uh, have certain um, network or achievement. They might start to calculate the return you, you the word you mentioned. <laughs> Let's say if I want to introduce someone to you, and they will start to think about the value, or or, or things you can, you know, we, you know, um, return to their contribution, right? So this is why, um, if you are already fifty something or you know, more senior. I think the most important thing is to really show um, the others you, um, your business have potential, and and I think it's it's quite important to you have a really clear um, deal with that person. If you contribute this, and in return we will offer that. So I think. I think it's quite important sometimes, even I say mentorship, but at the same time, I think it's quite important to structure a package that you could offer to that person in return to their support, right? And people, some of, some people would uh, ask for money, uh, some would want a title, you know, a title of like advisor or mentor, and some would want uh, recognition. So depending on what the person is looking for, and I think it's quite important for us to strategize something to get that person to 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 support you. And support could be, um, you know, introducing more contacts, putting more resources for you or the business. Those are all really great pieces of advice. And as you were saying those, I was thinking of things that I've learned um, in relation to that. One of the things I wanted to point out was you were saying if there's a speaker or someone that you come across, um, just in general, when you like, let's say someone writes something on Twitter or on LinkedIn, or they, you know, give an interview somewhere or they're giving a speech somewhere. Um, or even if you're just doing cold outreach uh, to some sort of potential business partner, um, saying what you learned from them is fantastic because the first thing they're saying is, Hey, you noticed me like, yeah. you know, thank you for telling me that something I've done has been valuable for you because like, Oh my God, that makes me feel good about myself. And you're making me feel good about myself. So I want to know more. What else do you have to say? And then you go, well, you know, um, this is how I'm applying it to what I'm learning. And like, I would love to talk with you more because I think, blah, blah. so, so yeah, this, uh, flattery i mean it's it's flattery in a sense but it's also real because it's you know it's based on your emotions you feel this way and well if you don't actually feel that way you probably shouldn't be contacting them because that's just malicious but yeah um but generally if you have that feeling reach out to them and it's a good opportunity to get them to want to talk to you and um i think for that kind of second meeting you can kind of set something like you know, look, I, I think you're great. I think what I'm, what I can learn from you is fantastic. And this is how I want to apply that information. And, you know, I, I would love to work with you more. Like, how is it, you know, is that possible, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's ways to handle that. Um, the, another thing you had talked about was, uh, it kind of almost sounded like bartering services in a way, like, oh, I'll be your advisor, but give me the title so I can put it on my LinkedIn profile. I'm your advisor. Um, yeah. there's something that I've been doing recently, which is I, I paid to join an entrepreneur community. I yeah. paid a lot of money. I'm not going to say how much, <laughs> a lot of money, a lot of money. And a lot of the people in there are multimillionaires. 
you know, some some do seven figures a year, some do eight figures a year, some do six, you know, fair enough. Um, but they all have different experiences than I do. Some are funnel specialists, some are paid ad specialists, some are, you know, great at building sales teams. There's a lot of skills that I don't have. And so uh, they all have their own issues in their own other ways. And so I've been doing uh, calls with them where basically they'll help me learn something that they know and I'll help them, you know, do strategy for how they can improve their business some. And that's been a lot of fun because I get great testimonials that I can put online Mm -hmm. and I get to learn a skill that I can use. But then I also get to help someone at the same time. And so I I love this, but obviously you, you have to be, you may, you maybe don't have to be at the same level as someone to be able to do that, but like you have to have a skill set that they don't have that normally like they would pay tens of thousands of dollars to learn that from somebody. They get to learn it for you from you for free, but they're also giving you tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of value. Yeah. Um, and so that's really a great way, you know, uh, to kind of side network, uh, to lateral networking. In terms of upskilling, uh, you were talking about, you know, mentorship and potentially paying for things as well. I think at a certain level, you should be thinking about a mastermind. So for example, from this community, I found a guy who has started multiple companies that each do seven figures a year mm-hmm. at the same time. Like they're co- they, they exist at the same time. Um, I also met a guy who started a seven figure business, an eight figure business and a nine figure business. So I'm starting a mastermind with these two guys. And actually later this evening, I'm having my first call with them. Now I'm not at their level because I haven't done multiple businesses of that size. But there are skills that I have that they don't have and there's skills that they have that I don't. And so I know that even though I'm not as big as them, I can still help them. For -hmm. example, one of the guys is American. All of his business has ever been done in the U.S., but he wants to do better tax planning. Well, for me, as someone who's lived outside of America for all these years, I've learned strategies for, as an American, how to do tax planning that's really efficient. So. I can help him save, you know, months and months of research and potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars talking to lawyers and and attorneys for how to do better tax planning for the next business he's getting ready to create. And we're also getting into a similar, we're also starting new businesses that are similar to each other, but just different enough that we can help each other with strategy, with planning, with, you know, messaging, with funnels, with all sorts of things that he has experience in some way. And I don't. So um, I think masterminds are great. And even if you're not a multimillionaire, right, even if you're just starting out, you know, even if you're just making $50,000, $100,000 a year, whatever, I think masterminds are great because you can meet other people and you can learn from them. And there is accountability rather than just some random person you met who like you, you may have to trust that like they're going to care about you. So masterminds are a great way um, to up network, um, and get mentorship and things like that. So let's say I want to be really ambitious. You know, let's say, let's say I have a job, I'm doing a hundred thousand dollars a year. Life is good, but I want to become an entrepreneur. And I know that like, there's this guy that's like somebody I know knows, let's say for example, okay. So there's this guy you just told me about, I'm not going to say his name to protect, you know, to protect your, your network and all that. You told me about him. He's apparently a billionaire. How can I get this stranger, right? So how, how can I, because I know you, get you to want to introduce me to this guy, right? I, now, I, I don't because I, I don't know him and I don't know if there's any value that he and I could exchange. But if I wanted to leverage your network to help me, how can I convince you to do that? Or, or if, you know, this guy's adjacent to me, he's close to me, how can I convince him to give me his time someone that's leagues above me you know interesting um (laughs) i like the fact you're using that example um you know what i think um i think it's quite important to know what you can bring to the table you want to get to know somebody because you know for the introducer um they would have concern about the reputation of themselves if they are introducing the random people to um, uh, the, the really important person, right? So I think it's quite important to work on ourselves. Like it, it definitely takes time for us to 
to have certain achievement, especially for young people. But um, first of all, I think it's important for you to, um, no matter yourself uh, or your company, you should have something uh, promising to bring to the table. Let's say I have a project that's I make investment and that project over there achieves certain milestone and is uh, a project that will bring high return and um, you know there is high growth in, in the company. And as an introducer, when I look at that, I would think, okay, this is relevant. Uh, so when I say relevant, it definitely has to be really relevant to the person you want to get connected to. You don't want to mix somebody without, you know, um, uh, you, because let's say if you are in tech and the person is in real estate and it means like your business, both of your business have no synergy and there's no point for the introducer to make the connections. And so this is why you have to study the profile of that uh, person. Let's say understand what are the investment strategy. Do they really keen on looking into your company? If yes, and make sure that you have a really good good traction to um, attract the person to look into the to, to the project you're with. And second is I would say um, you don't don't always count on um, you know the introducer. Because for uh, it's quite important for you to line up other uh, people's endorsement. Let's say you could talk to the introducer. Hey, not just um, uh, we already secure other uh, big names to endorse the product or the project, and that would give the confidence to the introducer. And definitely, the name of that the big name should be really. Um, impressive and able to help the introducer to make the connection right because you know uh, when the introducer thinking oh should i make the take the risk to, to to make the introduction they also want some reference <laughs> so it's quite important if on your end you need to facilitate the introducer to start the conversation so we always have to think how i can help the introducer to 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 secure the, the introduction, right? So what I usually do is first, I would uh, have something um, promising and, and even I would craft a message saying, okay, this is something you can help me to forward to that person. And second is, um, hey, um, this is this is something, um, you know, other leaders already join in, buy in, and that would increase the chance to get the, the person to uh, support you. And first is, you know, for, okay, I was mentioning to you, I'm going to make that person for lunch tomorrow. The reason for that is, um, um, you know, I introduce a certain contact to my friend and my friend want to pay back. So this is why my friend introduced me to that billionaire, like if you want to call them billionaire. So I think it's quite important for you in the beginning um, to, um, like what we, we talked earlier, you know, one of the tactics is like, you have to make the introduction first. You have to be generous first to share your contact. When you have certain common contact and people will feel that you have a group of like supporters, right? And then um, second is I, I, I met that friend, we have some common friend and he is a good friend of one of my mentors. So you can see sometimes it's like a small circle of friends and you, um, you need more people to come into that circle <laughs> to strengthen the relationship. Because when it comes to business, right, you can't just say, hey, um, two of us stop doing the business. And to, you need a more powerful network to do the business together. I think this is kind of like really Chinese mindset. Um, this is why we usually do business within a small circle. Um, but I think that is quite important. You know, if you are new to somebody, try to bring that new contact to your own circle first. And then um, second, you could um, start, you know, uh, asking for an introduction. I think that could work. Uh, one more thing I, one more 
tips maybe I want to share is quite interesting. Sometimes when you want somebody to introduce, make an introduction, make sure that introducer has good reputation as well. <laughs> you know, sometimes, you know, if that introducer um, were not well respected in the community, and that will create another problem because, you know, the person might associate you with the introducer. So you have to make sure the introducer is well respected in, in, in the community. Yeah. So if we can, I'd like to try to go a little bit deeper so that people have an understanding of, of like uh, what's happening here. So you've introduced this person to somebody. They've paid you back by introducing you to this guy. Do you have a strategy for why you want to meet this guy? Did you ask her to introduce you? Did she think that this would be someone interesting and decided, hey, I want to introduce you? And and when you meet with him, do you have an ask or are you just going to get to know him and see how you can help him first? Uh, honestly, because, uh, <laughs> you know, the meeting comes too quick. I didn't really, um, you know, prepare um you know what we're going to talk to more for the meeting um i think that i think sometimes you know uh people when people see you have certain uh achievement or you are getting there and they want to come in to have a role in your journey <laughs> i'm not sure you, if you you get what i mean you know sometimes in, it, sure. sometimes this is why i talk to people uh, when you have certain influence or power or wealth and people will just, you will naturally attract people. Um, you don't really need to knock the door. So that's why I think uh, at the end of the day is to work on yourself first. So let's say if Sean today, you are already like a multimillionaire or billionaire, I'm sure like everybody will want to get to know you if your podcast have like millions follower and people would just want to get on your podcast. So sometimes I, I realize is, you know, the, the harsh truth, right? <laughs> really harsh. The reality is like people come to you because they see something in you that they could associate with or take advantage from of that. So I think, um, so this is quite important, you know, realistic is to work on yourself and you don't need to knock the door of others. Uh, it could, when, when it comes to working, I mean, like working on yourself, it could be building your personal brand, personal influence, uh, or making your business uh, successful. And that all of this would get people to come to you. I think one of the key reasons is, um, you know, because the persons, the, the introducer would see, you know, FEW is fast growing and he want to share that part of the success. And, and I think that may be one of the jive he has in, in his mind. <laughs> yeah, I definitely know when I was running idea exchange, people yeah. tried to take advantage for sure. And I had to just tell everyone go away because I could, I could tell even at my young age and my lack of, with the lack of experience that those opportunities were not good. I only accepted one opportunity and that was working with the Chinese government. And I felt like I didn't have a choice mm -hmm. because it's the freaking government, you know, but, uh, they were, they were very supportive. So I, I couldn't say no to the offer. It was too good to pass up and it wasn't financial, but just the media support and the venue support and especially not needing to apply for a license every time we wanted to freaking have the event was like incredible. So, so yeah, in some instances you have no choice, but when you're running something, when you have a platform as you do, then uh, you can be, you can be picky with who you let in. Yeah. And um, I think that's the other side of it. You know, when, when you want to network, you sometimes can't be picky, but when someone wants to know you, you can be very picky. And I think that's that's really good to be able to build a moat around yourself by having a personal brand, by building a platform. You, as you said earlier, you can be the person that people want to know rather than you being the person who wants to know other people. So if people want to know you, 
then it's easier if because then you can find the people that you want to know very easily. Yeah. So the the secret here is be the founder of something, be own some sort of platform, have some sort of social proof and, and uh, influence and people will be knocking your door down. That's Maybe so not billionaires, but, <laughs> but, but one day. When, you're, when you have impact or making impact, and I think, you know, money will come naturally. Yeah. Uh, so random side note, you were talking earlier about like having these mentors part we have people from your network coming in and mentoring uh you know the members of few i'm surprised i'm putting you on the spot and i'm not ashamed to do it i'm surprised you haven't asked me to mentor your members <laughs> you, you know how much i support women i've i've had multiple mentees and they have all been women and i've That's i've helped cool. them a lot and you know so I'm don't sure be ashamed or afraid to ask me because yeah. I have experience and especially yeah. outside of Hong Kong, you know, yeah. it could be valuable to those women. Yeah, I think I'm sure like your experience of building community, um, starting up, and that will be really relevant and useful to our members. I will have my team to reach out to you soon. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a PR answer. Uh, no, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, I, I honestly, like sometimes, um, especially you have the background of like understanding psychology. Eh? I mean, talking to you is um, kind of relaxing and rewarding. Thank you. I'll take it. <laughs> I appreciate it. So is there anything that we haven't talked about, about networking laterally or upward um, that you can think of? I think one thing I usually do is uh, hosting people because uh, earlier we keep talking about, you know, how we could tap into others network and how we could, uh, you know, expand our network by joining associations. And, and I think, you know, um, it's, it's, it's also important that you could be the host, like inviting some key leaders, influencers to join your dinner or or like basically you what you used to do right and i think what we used to do you know having conference uh, events but that was more on the corporate level and and something i learned in recent years is um hosting uh, friends in a private setting is actually uh, more useful to build uh, strengthen the relationship because you know, when you are in a more intimate setting and you feel more relaxed and it's easier for you to uh, explore business opportunity because you know, you could share what you have in mind uh, personally or professionally. And I, I found uh, many leaders or famous leader, they actually hosting uh, private events in their own place or in the clubs. Um, because sometimes they don't want to expose themselves in the public area or they want some privacy or they want to have like private conversation with other leaders. So I think um, that is something we could do. Like if you want to engage certain stakeholders, let's say, yeah. Okay. All right, great. Thank you very much, Anna. I appreciate your time, your energy, and your vulnerability and sharing the secrets of how to network. So don't forget that <laughs> entrepreneurship is a marathon, not a sprint. So take care of yourself every day and look forward to our episode coming out next week, which will be about communication and chat applications and where that is right now and where they are heading. I'm talking with an Australian founder who's creating something that actually I tried to create years ago and I pivoted away from. So it'll be a really interesting conversation to talk about our philosophies on that. So thanks again, Anna. Take care. Thank you for staying with us until the end of this episode. We know that you'll like the other two that are on the screen now. The one on the top right is the episode that we think you would benefit from by listening to next the most. And the one beneath it is what YouTube believes is also a really good choice for you. So thanks again for sticking with us and we hope to see you on the next video.